This video demonstrates how to add epoxy sealant to ColorCube 92 and 9300 printheads to prevent unrecoverable multiple missing jets. Watch this entire video and read the instructions completely before starting this procedure. These steps are time critical and require you to complete the process in a specific order. To ensure that the seal can withstand the printhead's temperature fluctuations, the color cube must be turned on and the printheads must be hot. You will need one reusable kit 1 and one disposable kit 2 for each color cube you update. Before you begin, lay out all the kit 2 contents for easy access. To begin, print one copy of test pattern 1 from DC612, then five copies of test pattern 2 all from tray 3, long edge feed. If too many jets are missing, then replace the print head. Only seal heads with missing jets that can be purged or substituted. Refer to the service manual for help evaluating heads. This test print shows that this machine can be sealed. With the head still warm from the test prints, open the front door. Remove the inner cover. Remove the marking unit screws. Move the lower and upper carriages into their parked positions. Slide the marking unit out and lay the drop cloth underneath it. Using a flat blade screwdriver, Release the insulation and slide it to the side. Before completing the next steps, be sure to release the insulation from all four printheads. This process uses shims to direct epoxy into the correct location. Install shims into all four printheads, paying attention to orientation. Use the L and R markings to ensure you put the left and right shims on the corresponding sides. The folded portion must face you. If the shim is difficult to install, crease the fold. This demonstration head has a clear faceplate, so you can see what is happening. To install each shim, align the angled cut with the top of the head, then rotate the shim towards the bottom. If you've done it correctly, the shim is captured like this. Here is what it looks like on a real print head. The left side of printhead 1 and the right side of printhead 4 are hardest to access. Use a screwdriver to hold the insulation away while inserting these shims. Before injecting any epoxy sealant, be sure to install all the shims. Because the epoxy bonds quickly, complete the process on one head before starting the next one. Next, put on the gloves and prepare the epoxy. Inspect the mixing nozzles and align them with the tab.
Attach the nozzle to the epoxy tube. Attach the tube to the gun and prime the nozzle until a small amount of epoxy exits the nozzle. Wipe the nozzle clean. Once you start the next steps, finish sealing the head in three minutes or less. If the nozzle isn't in the correct position, epoxy will squirt out the side of the jet stack. Completely insert the flat portion of the nozzle between the jet stack and the ink reservoir. Squeeze the handle a full pull and hold for 15 seconds. Inject a second pull the same way. If epoxy is not exiting the tooling hole after two pulls, inject a third pull. Then do the same on the other side of the head. Inject at least two, but no more than three pulls on each side. Cut the shims flush to the printhead. Then seal the ends of the jet stack with a bead of epoxy. Replace the insulation and clean excess epoxy off the faceplate and insulation. Be sure there is no epoxy on the faceplate, which could rub against the drum or drip onto other components. You want to clean the excess off right away because the sealant in the printhead cures in just three minutes. It takes hours to cure in the nozzle. Next, seal the other head on the same carriage. Then change the epoxy tube. To remove any air from the nozzle, pull the handle for two full pulls, holding for 15 seconds each time over a paper towel.
Seal the heads on the other carriage one at a time. Cleaning the excess from each head as you go. If the metal tip of the nozzle is hard to insert in the jet stack, inspect and reform the nozzle with pliers if needed. It's critical to keep the epoxy away from the jetting area of the faceplate, otherwise you will damage the print head. With all four heads wiped clean of excess sealant, reinstall the marking unit. Close the front door with the inner cover removed. On the control panel, navigate to Service Diagnostics. Choose DC612 Print Test Patterns and select Test Print 1 from Tray 3. If individual jets are missing, purge using DC968. If ink is scraping off the drum, this usually means there is still epoxy on the faceplate or insulation. To fix this problem, align the scrape on the image with the print heads and determine where the problem is. Carefully remove the epoxy from the front of the head or insulation. Inspect and clean the cleaning unit and IOD sensor. Refer to the service documentation for specific instructions. Then reprint the test prints. Mark Machine Mod Tag 17 to indicate the rework is completed. Congratulations! You've successfully completed the procedure.